Hi, hello, welcome. It is Pip here from queenpipcards.com and I'm here live on my Facebook page and I will be loading this uh, tutorial up onto YouTube as well. Uh, it is my brand new basics live and hopefully some of you will find me and come on and say hello. I know I never put an exact time because I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to be late and then um everybody's like hanging around waiting for me so i say i'm going to be around 12 ish uh this morning and i am and jane's on hello jane nice to have you here give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay um yeah so today we're we're into week five of my brand new basic series and not quite sure where all that time's gone and um, we've talked about lots of different things but today we're talking about sizing and layouts so i'm going to be using uh the amazing life stamp set which you can find here on page, she says, there we go, uh, page 28 of the new spring summer catalogue. And it comes as a bundle, actually, which might not be very obvious when you first look at it, but it comes with this beautiful stamp set and then this set of layering rectangle dies, stitched dies, which are beautiful. But I know that for a lot of people who are brand new, you don't have a die cut machine, um, a die cutting machine. So I wanted to show you how to recreate this card and get your card cutting and sizing and layout sorted out if you don't have the bundle, you don't have a die shot, die cutting machine, a big shot, etc. Um, obviously, if you have got a big shot, then you can just replicate this card exactly as is uh, and get the rectangle framelits because they are magical. OK, so that's that bit. So let's have a look at this card. Hopefully you can see that don't know if I can zoom while I'm doing this. Let me just see if I can work out how to do that. Uh, do, do, do. No, I don't think I can. Let's just hope that you can see. It's on autofocus, hopefully, so you should be able to see that. So if you can see that, it's actually got stitched pieces here so that these pieces have got a stitched layering to them. So it looks like they're little dots and they're actually cut into the cardstock so you've got a clean edge and then you've got lots of dots which makes it look look like it's been stitched so that's why they call it the rectangle stitch framelits uh, but if you look at this card just as a normal card you could actually make this very simply without having any framelits and it would still look like a good card so i want to talk about cutting i want to talk about layouts uh, and all that kind of stuff so i'm going to bring my my trusty trimmer in. I'm doing this with only two lights today in the hopes that I don't get too much shine on this because this is what we really need to be focusing on. So in Europe and Australia, our cardstock is this size. It's 29.7-ish something, 6-ish centimetres. I've no idea why it's that size. By a very nice standard 21 centimetres this way. But because it's a funny size this way, it means you can't, you have to cut it and then just kind of know that one of them is going to be just a tiny millimetre bigger than the other. It's really hard to get it exactly in half. So, oh, hiya, hiya, how are you? I've pronounced your name wrong there, I know I have. But hello, nice to see you. I hope you're feeling good today. So this is your standard card base. And if you want to have a normal card that folds over, um, like this one here. So if you want a card that folds over this way, like a book fold, like that, then you would cut your card base in half this way because you're going to fold that piece over here. So you would cut that card in half and you cut that in half at 14.9 centimetres. Okay, so I'm going to do that in a second. This one, just to let you know, I've cut the other way around. I like tent fold cards as well. Okay, so this is my tent fold and it stands up like that. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, so I, I like them that way too. You can do them either way. Um, I will just show you how you can cut um, this way. So this, because most people go for the book fold, if you did want to do it this way, then you put it in with the short edge and um oh thank you honey 
Ilya says that so she's trying to stay positive and looking forward to my live and sharing it. Oh, thank you, honey. I do appreciate that. Um, hopefully I can make you laugh today. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> I'm sure at some point something will go wrong. Um, <laughs> okay, so if you want to cut it and do a tenth fold, then you go to ten and a half centimeters. Now I have no idea what it is in American, but it's basically just half the width of your cardstock. That's what you're trying to get to. If you want to cut it as a book fold card, which is our normal way of cutting it, then you put it at 14.9 centimeters. So this is why I love our trimmer. Our trimmer is fabulous because you can fit a card and cut it without having to put the arm out. Okay, so we've got an arm if you want to go bigger, but most trimmers, you have to open the arm to cut half a card, half piece cardstock. Okay, so I like our trimmer because it allows you to do that straight without having to fangle the arm out, get it caught and everything. You just pop it in and chop it. So I always lock my my um, safety guard here. I always lock that. There's a little switch at the top here that you push backwards and forwards. So I lock that into place. I hold it because there, it's a track in here. This if I if I show you here, this is a track, okay? So it has got quite a wide track in here. And so sometimes, you know, your your blade can move millimeters. So if you hold it, it's more likely to give you a straight cut. That's how I I just I just find it easier. So I hold it, get my straight cut. So 14.9 centimeters, hold it, cut it nicely. There you go. Now some people um We'll go back in and fold it on half at ten and a half and put a score line in um, like this. Or you can just fold it in half. It's up to you. So we're looking at sizings. OK, so now I have two exactly the same size pieces of cardstock. So this one I've scored. OK. Hey, Joanne. Nice to see you on here. How are you? Hope you're well. I haven't spoken to you for ages. I hope life's treating you good. Okay, so that's that, like that, and that folds it. So that's that's with it scored. I find it gives me even at ten and a half. It's just when you come to um, fold it in half, you just get a little bit of an extra edge. Oh, look, see, I uh, thank. Ali, I thank you very much for your um, American sizing there. She's put that in the comments. So she says it's cut at four and a quarter inches portrait and score at five and a half inches as card is letter size eight and a half by 11. And if you're going landscape, which would be this way, cut at five and a half and score at four and a half. Thank you very much, honey. That's great. Um, so I don't bother scoring my cards. I just fold it in half. Put my finger over here, put my finger at the edge so I know it's not going to slide anywhere. And then I just score it myself. That's that's just personal preference. I like doing it like that. Other people prefer to put a score in. I don't mind either way. It doesn't make any difference. You get a card at the end of it. OK, so now we're going to talk about layering. OK, because all of my cards that I do generally are layered and um, you will find that my standard layering is pretty much throughout all what I do, just because I like the, the way it looks. Sometimes I do square cards, but very often I'm doing what we call A6 size cards. So you're going to want to have a piece of paper or cardstock. You could use coloured paper or designer series paper. Uh, that's what um, DSP stands for if you hear it that anywhere. Or you could use coloured cardstock or anything else you fancy, really, foil, whatever you want. And that needs to be half a centimetre, basically, smaller all the way around um, when you cut it rather than this piece here. And then that gives you that nice edge. So just get these figures into your head and then you'll be set for life. OK, so. For a normal A6 piece of cardstock, so you've cut it at 14.9, you've folded it in half, okay? And this gives you a surface area of 10.5 by 14.9. So if you take half a centimetre off that, 
it means that this piece will be cut at 10 centimeters by 14.4 and then this piece will be cut at nine and a half centimeters by 13.9 and that will get you a nice a nice border size all the way around your cardstock like that okay so it just just gives nice definition and although you can just work with one piece cardstock you know like that on your card however you, you fancy it and then stick some elements on i think it's nice having that extra border it just lends a little bit more kind of pop to the card and then work it like this so if you had if you wanted it to have a dark front then you'd work with a dark card a light base layer and a dark front mat okay does that make sense good stuff hopefully it does and and that's it really those are my basic sizes so it's 10 by 14.4 nine and a half by 13.9 and unfortunately they're weird they're not nice even numbers um because our cardstock isn't nice even numbers it's weird designed by a man oh did i say that out loud right so i'm going to pop that over there for a moment now obviously we're going to need some foil and the foil just just to confuse everybody comes in sheets like this big 12 by 12 inch or 30 and a half by 30 and a half centimeters oh look lots of light oh lots of lights on that i'm not quite sure how i can turn that around there we go um <laughs> uh, but it's beautiful this is the pink one that we're working with today obviously we've seen the the lovely orangey grapefruit grove one that we worked with last week uh so i'm going to work with this one today and it is going to shine for a moment i think while i cut it so i want it to go down the whole length of this front piece so that means it has to be 13.9 so i'm going to pop this in my trimmer so it's just one little tiny notch before 14 basically it's very simple to remember that take that out and then i generally work in fives or sixes I believe this is a six no it's a five so you told you i work in fives and sixes uh, because it just looks nice on the card size because the overall card width is ten and a half five is a is a nice half size so it gives good balance when you move it around the card so that's fine that's how i do my layouts just so that you know so five centimeters because sometimes it's interesting to know why do you do you know why do you do strips like that why do you do this why do you do that it's interesting sometimes for people so that you know how 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 my brain works which is always slightly worrying um <laughs> but then <laughs> how it works so that you can replicate it at home but also see how it um how it looks on the card and then you can make your own decision you might decide that you want something a wider chunk in the middle but this is how i work these now i then get my trusty ruler <laughs> I told you I was going to make you laugh. Get my trusty ruler out because I want to cut these out by hand. Okay, this is four and a half centimeters by eight centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to cut that out eight centimeters by four and a half centimeters. And then I look at it and go, that doesn't look the right size, but it is. And I'm doing this because you, if you're brand new, you don't have a big shot. So I'm making it the same size so that you can make this at home without your big shot. Okay. And then I'm going to measure the little one. And this one is just, just over two and a half centimeters, but I reckon two and a half centimeters will work it. And then by six. So I'm going to do two and a half this way. So if I've got small things to do, I come over onto this side and measure it this way along. So I'm measuring two and a half because we've got a little ruler on this side as well, which is another reason why I love my trimmer. Do small measurements over here, two and a half by six. And the reason why I did that was because um, I just I'm frugal and I like to save cardstock. <laughs> there we go. And if I'd have done it, you know, six that way and then two and a half, we'd have got left with 
lots of little strips. Actually, that first one was pretty much there as well, wasn't it? Okay, so now we've got our pieces to put together. Now I can show you how I did it and actually stamp it, etc. And get that put together. So you see how these things in your eye, your brain works um, quite strangely sometimes. Uh, and you need to kind of give it some kind of trickery almost in some ways to make it look bigger, make things look bigger than they are. So because this is five centimeters, but this piece here is six, by lying, laying it over the top like that, somehow it seems smaller even than than that piece do you see what i mean it's bizarre but it is the right size but it seems smaller than that even though oh it is smaller than that <laughs> yeah see of course it is because it's only four and a half wasn't it pip i apologize I'm, my brain's obviously not with it that's why it works like that but um i also do it this way because i just want it to hang over both edges with the ribbon so we need to bring the ribbon in. Oh, I had one of those moments then. I have them quite a lot. Okay, so let's pop this on here. <laughs> uh, oh, I've got lots more people joining. Sorry, I haven't seen you. Oh, Maggie's on. Hiya. Um, oh. <laughs> Do you cut out the card in your layers and does it make any difference for posting? Oh, that's a good that's a that's a good um, comment there. Yes. So, um, I'm morning, Maggie. Hi. Uh, yes, I do. I do try and make my layers as flat as possible for postage, uh, because you have basically I think it's two millimeters that you can post. I have my little trusty thing. If you if you're ever unsure, you can go to the post office and you can ask them for one of these. OK, and I use this all the time. It's just a bit of cardboard, but it's got these slits through it. So it's five millimeter that you're allowed to pop through here. So then I just make sure that when I do my card, including my envelope, it will go. Th can you see that it will go through the hole? OK, and then that makes it standard postage. So I've used two layers plus some foil. And then these will be dimensional, put on with dimensionals and my little candle embellishment. And that will still fit through a normal standard envelope size. So you can get lots of layers and texture, but without going too thick. OK, hope that helps and answers your question. OK, so let's get back to this four and a half centimetres rather than six centimetres. Here we go. So, so I'm going to pop that on there, but I want to put this ribbon across first so that it gets onto the card before I put this top layer on here. OK, and this is our new all you love. Love you all. All you love. Hang on. I'm going to have to look. Oh, creep. That wasn't me. That was my chair. Um, it's a combo pack of ribbon. All my love. And it comes in a combo pack with Flirty Flamingo, which is a thin one. And then this lovely lipstick, which has a white stitched edge. And it is beautiful. Uh, but just be careful with this stitching that you don't pull it because it is you can pull it uh, and then it will pull out. But it's it is just it's just beautiful. And I like it because the stitching went with the stitching on the rectangle framelits. So we're just going to chop a piece off really quick and easy. And you don't really need a massive amount. I've probably gone over egg that a bit. And then I start assembly and I always start top down. So when you've got lots of layers, it's so much easier to just get your layers on. Get your layers on first. Now, normally I reach for my multi-purpose glue. That's what you see me use all the time. But for foil, do not put glue on the back. Don't put wet glue on the back of foil because it can it immediately shows through on the front. OK, so I always use my snail. So I have my dry glue. And I'm just going to go down. Um, I'm going to put some sides on this one because it, it's going to need to hold the card. OK, oh, I'm getting it stuck all over my fingers. <laughs> OK, so then I take everything off. Normally I use a bit of grid paper, actually. Have I got a bit of glue? 
Good. Paper. Just whisk this in. And I use this. You can use the um, smaller versions as well. We do the mini grid paper now that comes out. Um, it, it's basically it's been designed for the stamparatus, but you can you can use it. You know, just for card making tea. And I'm going to pop this down, but I use this to so I line up my edges. Okay, because I have astigmatism, so I can't really tell when anything is straight. To me, everything always looks crooked. People assure me it is straight, but <laughs> to me it always looks a bit off. So I use these lines to kind of help guide me to make sure that it is as straight as I can get it. So that's how I put that down. Then I can go back in and I will use Tombow on my Whisper White cardstock because um, I just it just holds everything so nicely. All right, and then that goes on to my lovely lipstick like that. And because I'm not stamping on any of this, it's safe to put this bit together before I put the stamping pieces together. And then I'll use my snail again to attach my ribbon. And once you get your eye in for cutting your layers, it doesn't take long to like attach all these pieces together. I'm going to put it in there, somewhere around there. So again, I'm going to put it down on the grid paper, make sure I know where I'm going. So it's, oops, one, two and a half, one, one, two and a half. Yes, it's that one there. So that just helps me get that straight. Then I know it's straight on the front of the card. Okay, so then we're going to just... We're going to go straight on and put that on the card now because there's nothing else that's going to go on that other than stuff that we're going to stick on top. So make sure you've got your front. Pop that on. There we go. Okay. So you can see you can do all of that, get all that ready. Oh, isn't it just oh, yummy? Yummy, yummy, yummy. And now I'm going to use my two little bits that I cut out and I'm going to stamp. So I've got the cake piece and I've got the life's too short for cake stamp. And I'm going to stamp them the other way around and see what it looks like because I did on this one, you can see I did uh, lovely lipstick up here and then Coastal Cabana down here. I'm going to be reckless and do it the other way around and see how that looks. Don't be put off by the fact that my stamp is pink. This is normal. It will, they will go pink as soon as you use any red coloured ink. And they'll stain, but don't worry. It doesn't mean if you if you're worried, just use it on the side and see. Make sure it's okay. And then I'm gonna go kind of just anywhere in the middle of that really, isn't it? There we go. There we go. Not too bad, a little bit crooked. I think, who knows. And then I'm going to use my lovely lipstick. I think this is going to make it a very pink card, but I'm, I'm, I just wanted to give it a try. So then we're going to use the lovely lipstick and pop that out there. Okay. Oh, lovely. Okay. So that's going to get yeah it's going to look different then what i've done on the other one is i've used my right markers just to color in a few of the pieces so i'm going to use the opposite colors here so i colored in all these little swirly bits here like that and I always start singing. I'm sorry, you get used to me. If you've watched my videos on YouTube, you know I always sing. <clears throat> I don't mean to, but it just sort of happens. Um, okay, I'll do this. We'll do the stripy bits. And then on this one, I coloured in this whole cake. And I find that if you go straight along the straight edges, okay, like this, then it's easier to join them up. Now, obviously, I'm using right markers, so it will leave 
bits behind it's not going to be like blends where they're completely perfectly smooth and they all just sort of blend nicely into each other obviously you can use blends because our ink pads are water-based and if you've watched my different inks brand new basics video you'll know that you can use water-based ink with any of our stamping blends uh, but i just i just everybody at my launch got a pair of these right markers so that they could play and then go home and play as well so we did that okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to replicate the stitched edging using my right marker okay can you see that well enough do i need to turn my light up a little bit i don't know i'm hoping you can see me do this okay give me some thumbs up if you can see me doing this that'll be handy right so i'm going to do i think i'm going to do all in green i think all in the coastal cabana i think so you literally are just going to replicate the stitched edging by just doing a whole set of dashes all the way along the edge now yeah it's not going to be as perfect or look oh thank you thank you honey um it's not going to be as perfect as if you use the stitched framelits but you can get pretty good at this I used to do this all the time uh, before I had a big shot. It just adds a little bit of dynamic dimension. Oof, that's a bit. We were talking about dimension last week. I don't think I need to be doing dimension this week. But it just it just adds something to the edge of the card, uh, and it just it gives it that stitched look without actually having the rectangles. Obviously, if you have a big shot, I'm going to say to you, get the rectangles because they are just great. And I like them because they add a border. So when you cut out the rectangular stitch shape, you also get stitching on the piece you've cut out, that you cut out from. So you get left with like a frame. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, we'll be having some frame cards coming up soon in my designs, I think. Gotta love a frame, especially for a shaker card, look great. Okay, so now I've just replicated that very simply and very quickly, hopefully. Don't need glue anymore. So now we're gonna do the finishing touches, which are of course dimensionals. Dimensionals, here we go. Uh, do I need little ones? No, I just need more big ones, just in case that's not enough. <laughs> you know me, I like my, I like my dimensionals, no soggy middles. No saggy medals in my cards. No. I'm going to make sure that this little sucker stays up. Here we go. Right. So lots and lots of that. It also helps to stick the ribbon down and make sure that it stays attached and doesn't wander underneath. So there we go. And as I said, we did all that postage thing. We checked it all. So we know it's going to work perfectly. And <clears throat> very croaky today. Not too much too much laughter going on at my launch on Saturday um, but yeah we know it's going to go through the post even with dimensionals on so that's okay and then I'm just going to offset that it's not going to go on perfectly straight which I know might upset some people you're a bit OCD so I apologize these this little guy is skinny enough that I'm just going to go three down the middle like that there we go and then pop that there just like that yeah kind of oh i kind of want to move it oh is it going to move oh you've got to give it a try okay <laughs> i just want it a little bit more central is that more central it's probably going to be more the other way now isn't it but we'll give it a try uh. Oh yeah, that'll do. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. So let's clear all this away. Now you can see. Chuck those in the bin. So now you can see that you don't actually need to have a big shot if you wanted to replicate that card. You can do it, you know, just um just just by cutting it out. And as long as you've got your sizes, it's gonna look very similar. And then I've got some of these candle embellishments here. And this one I used silver, so this one I'm going to put gold one on. And I think these are brilliant because I'm sure they were designed on purpose. 
to fit perfectly Oops. just on that little ledge there they sit just beautifully right there so those little embellishments you get silver and gold in the packets so you could do whichever one you want to so they're great and then if you do have a big shot obviously then you can get the stitched shaped um rectangles and then you wouldn't have to do your edging but i think it looks okay both ways what do you reckon all right and then if you really want to take it fancy and we were talking about layouts and how the fact that you can you can take the same elements and here i've done two different cards just by changing the color it doesn't look too different they look pretty similar yeah but they are different because the colors are different this has got stitching on it this has got hand drawn stitching on it but if you then took exactly the same pieces and turned it this way and if you had an embossing machine or a die cutting machine you could then emboss the foil and seriously there's no difference from one to the other other than the fact i've turned it around and i've turned it that way not put this all the way down to the bottom and then just added that embossing so i love making one card out of different like the same materials and then doing it different ways so you'll see that on my facebook page um, throughout this week i've done a whole bunch of cards we did basically two cards one set of materials two ways for the all of my launch stuff so we'll be sharing and showing lots more of that um, this time around but yeah this just uses the petal pairs so when i post this up i'll stick it up on my blog you'll be able to see all the uh, materials you need to make that one and these ones in fact i can put it on here afterwards so yeah so there we go oh i've got more thingies oh it looks beautiful which embossing yeah so this is the petal pairs embossing folder it comes um it came as part of the uh, petal palette um suite last spring yeah okay good i'm getting hot so you know <laughs> yeah so it's it's a two set one's got leaves and one's got flowers so um oh thank you honey <laughs> yeah so petal pears and it is it just looks it looks amazing on this um on this foil i think really cool so there you go so brand new basics sizing layout how you can just mix and match and change stuff up you don't have to be you know have all the whiz bang stuff it does look nice with the embossing but you can do it even without a die cut die cutting machine but if you are thinking about getting a die cutting machine then i completely recommend our big shot it is art to to me the best on the market you get a massive three-year warranty with it brilliant plates brilliant um base plates etc and if you join now you could choose your big shot as part of your starter kit and you'd still have another 70 pounds to spend on embossing folders rectangle dies or anything else that you wanted to do so there you go so that's my brand new basics i hope you've enjoyed that any more comments please post them below questions i will answer them all and i'll be back again next week with some more brand new basics. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Take care now, folks. Have a good week. Bye.